Department of State has issued a travel warning to inform U.S. citizens traveling to and living in Mexico about the security situation in Mexico. I'm just reading right here, you know, beheadings and hangings plague Tijuana amid festivals. There's killings, there's <laughs> drug cartels. Just saying we'd probably be safer fishing in Afghanistan. Going into a war zone. Stay hell away from out of his jeans. Oh, Those two guys that were getting into our car, if you had them in a lineup of 10 people, it's the guy that had the knife I probably could, but the other guy I didn't get a good look. 10 ibuprofen stat. She goes off and she says she's gonna kill me. She's giggling, she completely changed her personality. She ain't coming through that door. So now everybody in the hostel thinks, I'm the crazy one. Learn from the best, you become the best. Okay, grasshopper? We go around the corner and we start fishing again and we hear gunshots. I, mean, I don't know whether to call it a crossroads or an unraveling at this point. Fingers crossed, we make it. Hey, a second, man. Hey, you got any oil? Any oil? Any oil? Okay, thanks. This quick, we want to do this clean. You don't want to make a mess. Go! Huh? Go! We've always wanted to go into Mexico and do the entire country. The logistics of getting this trip working proper is insanity. Just looking on a map, you know, we're looking at 8,000 miles. Go down the west coast, circumnavigate Baja, shoot across the Sea of Cortez, go across the entire mainland, and then end in the Egypt. There's a lot involved. As far as getting all of our equipment together, organized. <laughs> we had to go somewhere that wasn't going to cost a lot. Um, you know, we're just starting off a new business. We only have so much money that we're going to be able to work with here. And I'm a little skeptical to think we're going to make it over to Yucatan because we're running out of money. <laughs> I'm going to keep pushing the numbers, see what we can find. Any way to trim this budget down because we have got figure out a way to save some money so that we have enough fuel to make it back to the states. Or God forbid, if we have some type of a mechanical uh, failure out in the middle of nowhere, then we're gonna be totally screwed. We're gonna be screwed anyway, but. So we decided that it'd be really cool if we did this uh, entire trip, two months, almost 8,000 miles, if we didn't burn any fuel whatsoever, aside from what we could find along the way. And uh, by fuel, I mean vegetable oil. And just straight vegetable oil, that's all, we, that's all we're gonna use. This right here is pretty much home for the next uh, week or so. We're at Joel Wolf's house. Uh, he's got a company called Veg Powered Systems. So long story short, standing out in front of my house, this white truck pulls up. Big old splur of black crap. It's running on like seven cylinders. And these guys are gonna drive this thing to Mexico. Oh my God. For the first time in my entire life, I've never seen anybody so helpless. I actually felt sorry for him. To try to organize uh, you know, a multi-month expedition on the road, it's been an absolute nightmare to try to put together. People just don't understand the planning and everything that has to go into it. Let's throw down some power. I really do. I love to fish. Fishing to me is, is a place where I go to, to uh, I don't know, find myself for that day, you know. Everything out in the world isn't it, isn't working. Right Sometimes it's not about that. It's just being there for that moment. Just going, you know what? This is better than all of that out there. I'm Thanks. done. Thanks, Hunky Joel. <laughs> Going into a war zone. 
traveling, traveling, traveling down Baja, a long ways. The Devil's Road. People get killed on it every day. Semis rolled over, cement truck. Another fine mess. Just got flagged down by some police officers. I don't know what's going on. One ticket for you. You pay, you go home. Ten thousand pesos. You got that? Maybe because that one bolt is stripped, the other one is... Yeah, we're wasting way too much time during the day, burning our daylight hours, and this should be driving. We got stuck in Loretto, had issues with the truck again. Steve is up. Truck has got um, Los Cremalins. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Oh, black. Now, pump's working now. What? He's got it backwards. He's pushing the yeah, this might shoot right in the lens. There will be a day where we go more than seven miles. So it's not today. Just drive off with them and keep my window clean. <laughs> wakey, wakey, eggs and bacon. <laughs> Holy <laughs> sh! That one little stupid coil, man. Is that a gunshot, Owen? Brian and Thad are navigating to the middle of nowhere. Auto partes. Yeah, it's kind of difficult explaining uh, that our vehicle runs on vegetable oil. No diesel. That's the end of the well, kind of everything gets lost in translation. Go, 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 go! We go around the corner and we start fishing again, and we hear gunshots. Huge field. Chartreuse green all through the woods. The entire side of the hill is covered in green with all marijuana. What do you do when you're in a foreign country and your passports get stolen? So we just got totally hijacked. We got robbed at the Walmart. And my wallet, Brian's bag, I mean, favorite lens and, and our good mics. He pulled a knife out of his jeans. All my camping gear had cameras. Like a knife was like this big. It was like bigger than 12 inches, you know. It just dawned on me that inside the orange bag lied all the weapons. Wasp spray, berry mace. One kick in the ass after another. It should spin freely. And we finally got a chance to get out and do some fishing. Yeah, we've been trying. We've been trying for the past three days non-stop. We've been out fishing like 10 hour days. But today we decided to stick in a little bit closer. I don't know, maybe three miles, three miles from shore. We went and checked out some birds that were diving. Are those birds a good sign? I, it's a lot like a green drake hatch, except uh, frigates, frigates and Massive fish chewing shit up. Yeah. My war paint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Jay was the first person to, uh, to actually hook up with a fish. He had a pretty bad first fish experience. He lost the reel. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Been fishing for three days trying to get a hookup. Finally, one hookup, everything comes off. Popsville. Yeah. We're circling a bait ball right now. Frickets are hammering the water. Look, there goes another one. Well, Thad's been fighting this fish for about two hours now. <laughs> He's gone. I done put my fly out back to get a little strippy strip. Next thing you know, double. Rocking double. Popeye arms get these things in. Get your ass. This is this is ridiculous. Who's the boss? I'm the boss. Who's the boss? I'm the boss. Who is the boss? I'm the boss. Hey, some gator. How do you spell boss? M A R L I. <laughs> We, uh, we found a trail, we're gonna try to get through this other lagoon, and uh, we've heard there's some really big snook over there. You know, it's one thing to look on Google Earth. Actually, we drop into the river right there, and we're yep. thinking, oh, we can sneak through this little patch of jungle and get the boats into the 
lagoon back here and everything's gonna be fine. Yes! A crack right there from a couple sharp mangroves. You just don't do that. I'm gonna tell you why. Because it's hell. That's a big snug. Holy shit! Certainly, I, I'm not going to allow, you know, me or anybody else to get into a potential hostile situation. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to prevent this from happening, but um, I'm bringing bear mace. <laughs> yeah. 